Hello YouTubers and welcome to the JK Lenses Guide to using manual lenses on your Nikon DSLR. If your first thought on seeing this title is to wonder why you'd want to put an entirely mechanical 40 year old lens on your 21st century space age DSLR body, then there's a couple of points worth making before we get started. Firstly, if you look back at many of the lens reviews on this channel, you'll notice a bit of a pattern emerging in terms of the development of Nikon lenses. At many focal lengths, the AFS version of the lens, despite its improved feature list, shows little or no improvement in optical quality over the AFD version. Also, for many Nikon lenses, the AFD version has a similar or identical optical design to the one used in its long-standing manual focus predecessor. Although this isn't true for all Nikon lenses, if we're following this channel's commitment to maximum optical quality for minimum amount of money, then any focal length manual focus lenses are certainly worthy of your consideration. If you've decided that the adventure of manual lenses is for you, then the rest of this video is designed to help you get the best out of your chosen lens. The first two sections are designed to help you check that your camera body and lens are compatible with each other. This is important because if they're not, there's a risk of damaging the camera body, the lens or both. The next three sections are about transferring manually some data which modern lenses transfer instantly to the camera body. And the final section shows you how to use the camera's autofocus system to help you with the focusing of your manual lens. Firstly, if you're going to be able to use your camera body in anything but the most basic mode with older lenses, then you need to check that it has an AI coupling lever. This is very easy to do simply by removing the lens and looking at the lens mount from the front. The AI coupling lever is a little lever that sticks out at about the one o'clock position and springs smartly back into place if you push it to the side with your finger. If your camera has this lever then there's an enormous number of manual focus lenses which can be used to take fantastic pictures with it. Secondly is the slightly trickier process of checking that your manual focus lens is young enough to work effectively with modern DSLR bodies. This is the part of the manual lens process which can sometimes seem a bit confusing. So to get things straight in our heads let's just take a moment to look at a lens and think carefully about exactly what it does. As you can see very clearly from this manual lens, a lens has precisely two functions. Firstly, it moves bits of glass around inside in order to focus the image. And secondly, it changes the size of the hole the picture is taken through or the aperture in order to control the brightness of the image. Now, as the human being operating the camera, there obviously seems to be a world of difference between a manual focus lens that has to be focused by turning the rubber ring on the lens and an autofocus lens which the camera body focuses either mechanically or electronically. However, to the camera body, the way in which the lens is focused is entirely secondary. The deal breaker in terms of whether the body and lens are going to be able to take pictures together is the camera body's ability to understand which aperture has been set on the lens. And this is the feature of the lens which we'll show you how to get right in this section. To make this a bit clearer, here's a handy diagram. This is obviously a rough timeline of Nikon lenses with the dawn of the F-mount on the left and the latest G and E lenses on the right. The bottom half of the diagram is the part which you might have been expecting. In simple terms, Nikon lenses needed to be focused manually up until around 1986 when they started producing autofocus lenses, which could be focused by the camera body rather than the human being. However, this is not the aspect of a manual focus lens which you need to get right in order to be sure it's going to work on your modern DSLR body. Critically important is the way in which the lens transmits information about which aperture has been set to the camera body, and this is described by the top half of the diagram. Over on the right hand side of the diagram we have Nikon's modern post-1986 autofocus lenses. These transfer their aperture information to the camera body using a computer chip on board the lens and a what Nikon term a CPU lens. Manual focus lenses from before 1986 are a bit less straightforward for the camera body because they don't have a computer chip on board and transfer their aperture information mechanically. Hence in the Nikon software they're termed non-CPU lenses. It's the last generation mechanical coupling system, the AI system, which can work with modern DSLR bodies. Before 1977, Nikon used other mechanical systems, such as the two little metal prongs or rabbit ears, to transfer aperture information from the lens to the camera body. And it's these pre-AI or non-AI lenses which we need to avoid, as they won't transfer aperture information correctly if fitted to a modern DSLR and may damage the camera body or the lens. Using the lens's serial number and the excellent photosynthesis website to work out which year it was built in is unfortunately not an entirely reliable way of deciding whether it's an AI lens or not. As retro compatibility has always been a bit of a hallmark of Nikon lenses and camera bodies, AI lenses from well after 1977 were still built with the metal rabbit ears to make them compatible with pre-AI camera bodies. And also in the late 70s and early 80s, and in fact still today, it's possible to take a pre-AI lens and have it converted to the AI system. As this is such a big deal, people selling manual focus Nikon lenses normally go to great pains to make it very clear whether it's an AI lens or not. However, the only way to be 100% absolutely certain is to look at the lens itself. If you hold the lens with the aperture scale on top and look at the part of the lens barrel which is closest to the camera body, then an AI lens can be identified by the notch that's been cut out just behind and to the right of the aperture scale. It's shown in green on this photograph and if you can find this notch then you have an AI or an AIS lens. If you can't find this notch then it's a pre or non-AI lens. There are ways of telling whether the lens is an AI or its later variation an AIS lens 
but this makes absolutely no difference to a modern DSLR camera. As you probably worked out, the idea of this notch is to engage with the AI coupling lever which we've identified on our camera body, and this is why pre- or non-AI lenses that don't have this notch must be avoided, because they can very easily damage the AI coupling lever sticking out of the camera body. I'm sorry these first two sections seem to have taken quite a long time, but as we said at the start, checking the compatibility between the lens and the camera is extremely important. Nikon manual focus lenses, which are many decades old, can still have legendary optical quality and command very high prices, and trying to fit the wrong lens to the camera body can result in damage to both these two expensive items. Now that we're sure that our camera body has an AI coupling lever and that we're definitely trying to fit an AI or an AIS lens, we need to manually enter a couple of bits of data into the camera body's memory before we can start using our manual focus lens. When it's used on a modern DSLR, the mechanical AI linkage only tells the camera body how much the aperture is changing by, not the actual value of the aperture. For this reason, we need to manually tell the camera body the fastest aperture of any manual focus lens which we fit to it. The good news though is this only needs to be done once, as the camera body can store these figures. To do this, we need to press the menu button on the back of the camera and navigate to the non-CPU lens data option in the setup menu. As you can see, I've entered the focal length and maximum aperture for my excellent 135mm f2.8 manual focus lens, and I've chosen the number 3 to store these particular figures in the camera's memory. As we'll see in a moment, this means that whenever I put this particular lens on my camera body, all I have to do is to tell it that it's non-CPU lens number 3, and the camera's electronics will know that it's dealing with a 135mm lens with a maximum aperture of f2.8. If, like me, you've got more than one manual focus lens, then you obviously store each lens's data under a different number. Once you've entered the focal length and maximum aperture for each of your manual lenses, all you then have to do is to call up its individual lens number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or whatever, every time you put each lens on the camera. One of the neatest ways of doing this is to customise the function button which lives on the lower left of the lens mount to give you immediate access to your non-CPU lens data without needing to shuffle through any menus. To do this, go to the controls option in the custom setting menu and select the assign function button option. Because we might need to toggle through several lenses, we select the function button and command dials option and then select the choose non-CPU lens number option. With these settings now OK, this means we can use the function button and the command dials to quickly select the settings for a particular manual focus lens. For example, whenever I want to use my 135mm f2.8 manual focus lens, all I have to do is hold down the function button, just out of shot in this photo, and rotate the command dial until I've selected non-CPU lens number 3. As you can see from the top display panel, this provides the camera with the focal length and maximum aperture values which we entered, and which you would get directly from a modern lens via the CPU on board. If I rotate the command dial with my thumb, I can select from my other non-CPU lenses, imaginatively numbered 1, 2, 4 and 5. Incidentally, if you prefer a larger display, pressing the info button on the back of the camera will provide you with the same information on the camera's rear display screen. Finally, if you're looking forward to top optical quality at a very low price from your manual focus lens, then it's obviously very important to make sure the photographs are in focus. The good news is that although the camera can't focus the lens itself, many of its autofocus features will be able to help you get exactly perfect focus. There are basically two ways of doing this, and the first one simply involves looking through the viewfinder in the normal way. Even though the lens is a manual focus one, you'll find that you can move the little red focus points around to whichever point on the screen you want, and when you tap the shutter release button, you'll find the two little triangles in the circle at the bottom left of the screen will show you which way to turn the focusing ring and confirm when focus is spot on. The second way is to use the live view function if your camera body is fitted with it. As you may already know, when you push the live view button or lever on your camera body, it gives you a live view of the image that's falling on the sensor that's actually going to be taking the photograph. This is displayed on the screen on the back of your camera body, and thus gives you a nice big image to work with as you manually focus your lens. This way of focusing using live view has two distinct advantages over the conventional viewfinder method. So much so that I often use this method with autofocus lenses as well. Firstly, unlike the viewfinder method where your focus points are limited to the central area of the image, in live view you can use the direction pad to put the focus points absolutely anywhere you like, even in the four corners of the image. And secondly, you can zoom into the live view image in exactly the same way as you would zoom into a photograph that you've just taken. This means you can have a single focus point filling the entire screen, and therefore be absolutely certain of getting just as accurate focusing with manual focusing as you would with autofocus. Incidentally, some Nikon DSLR bodies have two live view modes, handheld and tripod. If you want to move your focus points around to the farthest corners of the screen, and zoom in in the way I've just shown you, then you'll need to select the tripod mode. To do this, you simply go to the live view mode option in the shooting menu, and select an OK tripod mode. Despite their age and lack of helpful handling features like autofocus and VR, Nikon manual lenses can deliver optical quality second to none, sometimes at almost giveaway prices. For this reason, I hope you found something useful in this video, and if you've not used manual lenses before, that it's given you the confidence to put your toe in the water. If you've enjoyed the video, then please subscribe, and as always, very many thanks for watching.